hello everyone welcome back to another live stream of this channel i am abby caparas and here every week i give my tips and strategies for personal development once in a while i still go back to my favorite topic which is really giving some tips on using technology if you're new here i'm a former academician i have spent 28 years in a local university. I have risen from the ranks as an instructor and um, I retired after 28 years of service at the, and my rank was associate professor. And now I am enjoying myself doing online education. And in my past life, I graduated summa cum laude from the University of the East. I was I landed in the top 20 in the board exam of the certified public accountant and I have built an academic career that is really more into, I became very well known on my research on work-life balance, on my lectures on management ethics or manage, managing people and ethics in management and now shifting to online education, sometimes I forget these achievements and I get to be really concerned that I have limited skills on online marketing, on online entrepreneurship, that sometimes I, I sometimes forget that I have, I could surpass these limitations as I have done before, right? And sometimes they are also called limiting beliefs that really I cannot succeed now. I cannot succeed in this online world. So if I feel this, I know that there are also many in many people out there who could be bogged down by seeming limitations, overwhelming limitations. And sometimes the current realities, uh, you might have leaders, managers, top executives who might not be achievers. And you might say, what's the use of achieving so much if what is accepted is really low performance and people can succeed without really being achievers. I mean, they can go up the ranks and they might not be educated. Why, why, I mean, why achieve so much if what is accepted is really sometimes low standards? And um, sometimes um, there could be somehow more recently, not only in the Philippines, but also starting from the US, sometimes you have all of this fake news and you might say you can also earn money without even thinking about what you have achieved in your education you can just um, like threaten people you can be very uh, unkind that doesn't need education why why would i be relying on really aiming so high in my life if the people who somehow succeed in society are not really the, they don't seem educated some of them so sometimes we can get into that feeling that i don't need to succeed I don't need to aim so high in life right now. And um, I know that sometimes if I feel this, there could be many other people who could be feeling this. So in this inaugural uh, live stream, when it comes to um, these talks about overcoming limitations, I have created this summa cum laude talks so that I could interview, I could have a conversation with fellow summa cum laude graduates. Some of them um, probably just recently graduated or later on we can have um, people from different ages. And the common thing is that they have surpassed the limitations. They have really achieved so much at the university level and that somehow could give them a um, track record and really um, the habit that they will need to succeed better when they go into the workplace, okay? And I'm very happy that today I have my first guest. This is very memorable. I was referred by a friend of mine, Dr. Sal Teleg, to, um, to Justin John Serdancilio, who graduated from Syracuse University in New York State. He graduated with a degree of aerospace engineering and with Latin honors, summa cum laude. So I'm very happy that he is able to come. Now I think this is 9 p.m. in Manila and it could be 9 a.m. in New York. 
So let's see if we can get him here. Yes. Good morning, Justin. How are you? You can Hi, meet the morning. audience. I'm all good. Yep. I'm all good here in New York State and it's a sunny day outside. Okay, that's great. I could see it from the window. Wow. You seem to live like in a that's a very nice ceiling. Seems like an attic, is it? Yes, I live in the third floor of our house that that we're leasing with right now. Okay, that's great. And you have sunny weather. That's good. Here earlier it was raining, so I was quite oh. afraid that I aside from the electric fan, <laughs> I might get the sound of the rain. So hopefully, I hope that people are watching. You can comment if you are if you are able to hear both of us. And if there are some noise, you can adv you can let us know. Okay, so okay. let us go to the first question if you're ready, Justin. Sure. First of all, Justin, I I looked into your bio in LinkedIn and there I thought I saw a different name. Are you really called Justin? Um. So my actual name is Justin John A. Cerdoncillo and I've been called different nicknames actually in Pisai, I actually was called Serds. In grade school, yep. In grade school, I was called Justin. Uh -huh. But um, in college, I actually I go by JJ ah, because okay, it's so a lot easier to pronounce, and they don't like misspell the e at the end. That's why. Ah, uh, okay. So sometimes they they might think you your name doesn't have an e in the last. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. But in yeah. any case, you're comfortable if, if I call you Justin. Sure. Justin. Sounds good. No, not Justin. No or what? what? Where is the accent? Let I think it's it fine. Right. Like either way is fine though. Yep. Okay, that's great. So for my first question, why did you ever think of going to Syracuse University? You can just go in any place. You can just be here in the country. Why did you ever aim to be in Syracuse? Okay, so to be honest, Doc, um, my main plan was to study in the Philippines. And I've actually applied to different universities in the Philippines, such as mm -hmm. UP, at Ateneo, La Salle. And I was accepted to, uh, to those universities I applied to. But there was a side plan with me and my parents where I was going to go to university in the United States. Because, like, although like like although these universities in the philippines are prestigious and they are good there seems to be a lack of that um, none of these universities actually offer aerospace engineering which is a major that i really wanted to do so which is why i looked up into different uni universities abroad and syracuse was actually one of the universities there and thankfully i was able to be accepted into it and that's where I am right now. Okay, so I got into some ranking and really Syracuse was really is really well known when it comes to aerospace and aeronautical engineering. Yeah. Did you say you also applied in other US universities? Yes, I did, but not to a lot actually. Yeah. And why in the end Syracuse you really really aim for that and like you really envision yourself right after graduating from high school you really envisioned you're going to land in syracuse campus um yes more or less because as much as possible i wanted to study in the new york state area okay that's great and why why did you choose aerospace engineering like i i just read that it's as difficult as mechanical engineering is it is it yes. somehow similar why why did it you is choose that similar, yeah. yes okay so um aerospace in engineering like any other engineering field is mostly focused on math and science and which is something that i've been interested to since i was a young age but additionally why i why i eventually chose aerospace engineering is because i was also interested not just on the math and science field but also in the concept of flying so I was interested in flying and going to outer space and exploring. So, and because of that, I think for myself, mechanical engineering and other engineering fields aren't enough. And I wanted to 
focus on as well through the research of fluid flow and just like fluid dynamics, which you can't really find in other engineering fields. You know, I I was smiling earlier when you said, I want to go to outer space because it's like, <laughs> I want to go to the Bisoy. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's so near, no? Wow, that's really amazing. You want to go to the moon, you want to go to, wow, that's really amazing. And what made you really want that? You want to go to outer space. What, what, what is there? Uh, what motivated you to like it? I think it's more of because that um, our our world isn't just the Earth. You know, we have we have a vast amount of space that we still have to see and discover. And the thing is, like every single thing that we will see is magnificent it's beautiful it it awakens our curiosity and it makes us to want more and aside from that the concept of space itself and trying to achieve and go more has always been like a human achievement it's not an achievement of just a single person but just like going to the moon before even if that was done by uh, americans i think every single person felt that and was and they felt proud of having that achievement. And I want to contribute and use my skills to be in part of that group that that makes those dreams attainable. Wow. So, like, did you ever dream that you will also land on the moon? Or Not you necessarily. Will just, you will just uh, <laughs> facilitate that there will be many um, uh, developments there in that area? Yeah. But um, but I don't necessarily have to be like in outer space. But like I would want to be like a, a part of the team that works to uh, get there. Very good. And aside from landing in Syracuse, and which is a top university, and getting into aerospace engineering, you also uh, ended your your studies with summa cum laude honors. Could you give us some tips? Do you have some top five? How many tips do you have when it comes to getting that highest honors? Okay, so for me, I try to keep my my method simple. And I think with simplicity comes that you can focus on your tasks better. But the main tips I have is first, I I always try to pray as much as possible because I know that I'm like far away from home and doing a hard major and also with goals that that are like pretty hard to attain. So I really start with prayer because I don't think I can do it myself. I think I have to get strength from from God and and of course like to also give back and show my gratitude. So aside from prayer, I also think it's necessary that you always try to schedule your tasks. So I use multiple calendars and I use multiple like checklists so that um, I can make sure that all my tasks are being done on time and that I'm doing it really well. And aside from scheduling and praying, I think the last one would be to find balance. I think finding balance is important because when people try to be overachievers, they tend to overwork and overwork isn't good. I think it's I think it's important to remember that rest is also productive and that um, working too much will eventually lead to poor performance and it's important to keep your to keep your mind away from work sometimes so that you could try to focus on just doing your hobbies and also that's a good motivation for you to keep going uh, going more forward and just you know like building endurance but in a work setting okay that's great it's really like uh, my favorite topic in terms of balancing right you have time to to study you have time to pray you have time to um to do sports, uh, yep. do other things, physical exercise. But for the sake of uh, if you have some young people here still studying, 
could you give us an idea of how your day schedule is like how many hours do you attend in school and then how many hours do you study personally okay so just let me think about it for a second but um i think i'll look back into last year's um like schedule around that time i used to wake up around um 5 30 a.m and then for that time i tried to prepare myself like try to get a drink and a quick meal before i head out to go to the go to the gym which is a thing that i th- that i like doing so that i can start my day right and so that i feel not really like i feel energized and i feel like because i've done the gym in the morning that means i can do pretty much anything in the afternoon so i work out for around one hour to one and a half hours in the gym after that i go home and get ready and i have class for around six hours and actually since my since my schedule is pretty um it's pretty random between the week and there's also gaps between my classes i try to as much as possible do homework during those times and then i get home around um six or so and i use that time to prepare for the next day which means i could be preparing meals or i could be preparing for work or i could be like preparing uh, my clothes and just my my stuff because my day varies from from day to day so um so within the week how many hours of personal study like on an average per week how many hours of personal study do you do like you mentioned I'd, six hours of basically being yeah. in the classroom really depends on yeah. the number of subjects right yep i think um i use a tracking app called forest, forest. and i think i was cons- uh, is that the, yep. like the typical forest f-o-r-e-s-t i mean just yes. for students yes. okay yep what does and it do I think um, in Forest, you can tr- um, track the number of hours that you do for studying, for working out, and for pretty much anything that you put in there. Uh-huh. And uh, and the thing is, like, for every work that you do, you build a tree, which motivates you to build a forest, which wow. which where the which where the app title comes from. I wow, think in Forest, I think I can remember that um, I go around. 20 to 30 hours of study per week yeah yep per week so yep. is that like and then the forest like you get more branches <laughs> there's there's more hours of study that's why this part of the tree i oh, know you're talking about forest so there's more trees yes. in terms of individual study and you can somehow so, see by the end of the week that you have less time for rest and you have so much time, so many trees there in terms of individual study. It's cool because it's like um, for every session you have builds a tree or a plant. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, the longer your session is, the bigger your plant is or your tree is. So at the end of the week or at the end of the month or at the end of the day, you can see how many plants you have and like the different sizes of plants that, that you have. Wow. Yeah, so you could pretty much like assess as well and i think it's more of like it's a positive reinforcement for you to do more because aside from that i think um in the app itself once you um you also get coins when you when you work and and after a certain amount of coins you you can use those coins to actually donate a physical tree that the oh. that the company for, of the app will do for you yeah yep. i remember that probably in another app like you can donate a tree yep. i remember that and then do you still have time for social media like does it show in some form of a shrub <laughs> i don't know what how does it represent or do you really have time for facebook for instagram for other things um yes i i still do have time for social media and to be honest like like most filipinos um I get, you know, like engaged in social media for a long amount of time. But as much as possible, I try to uh, track my social media time through 
app limits or through screen time in my iPhone. And of course, like I tried to put limits on it so I don't spend too much time on it. And as much as possible, I tried to uh, um, lessen the number of hours or minutes that I spend on it. Okay. But that's really something interesting, the forest. I might try that. Uh, so that you can somehow it's motivating that you have grown a forest with your work. That yep. sounds interesting. Yep. Okay, I'll try that. Probably the ones who are watching us, if you if you have tried that, you can tell us in the comments um, how useful it was or it is for you, for your motivation. Okay? <laughs> and then you mentioned, what are the other apps that you use? You mentioned several calendars. Isn't, isn't that... Um, confusing to have several calendars like I know sometimes in one of my talks uh, somebody said that he started putting all the calendars together because he missed um, uh, school activity because he has a calendar for the family a calendar oh. for the office so how does it work having multiple calendars for you like don't you miss anything in other calendars oh um Actually, I don't miss anything from my calendars. So my main calendar that I use right now is Google Calendar. So that has all of my tasks. So all of my events, all of mm -hmm. my homework, schoolwork, mm -hmm. and that also has like tasks that I have to do. So okay. I have an overall calendar through Google Calendar, but I also have a calendar that I use for, for school purposes which has my homework as well. So homework and then my class schedule. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I use multiple calendars is that, and why it's not confusing for me, is that I can actually integrate my, my work calendar, which is from another app, but like I can export that calendar and sync it to my Google calendar mm -hmm. so that everything that I change through my work calendar yeah. will, will reflect in my main calendar and that basically in my main calendar, which has other events, that's the one that I'm mainly looking at during the day. And so that's where I can see really if one, I have class. Okay. Yes, one unified calendar yes. where you integrate yep. everything. Yep. Very yep. good. Very good. And did your strategies change throughout those? How many years did you um, study engineering, uh, aerospace engineering? Is that uh, four or um, five years? I did it four years, four years. Four years. So. Was there any change in strategy and study techniques as you try to monitor your progress? Like if you're aiming to be summa cum laude, was there some uh, greater speed or greater uh, studies? Like how did you develop those strategies as you adjusted to really getting that grade that can make you, I, I thought your GPA was like 3.995 or 9.55 out of four? Nine. It's 3.961. So I right suppose now. you were tracking it every year yeah. ev or every semester? Every semester. Indeed. Every semester. So uh, could you tell us some instances when you change your strategy, you modify, if you knew that you were like not going to reach that target or you had to oh. like rest a little because you know, yeah, my I, I'm going to reach my target. You get oh. it? Yep, yep, yep. I got it. So, um, as compared to, um, I'm not sure if this is a common experience for all, like for other people, but actually my lowest grade was from my first semester of school and college. And from that semester, I saw that, that I was able to get high marks, but at the same time, I felt that I, I didn't think I put in enough, which means that I can do more and I think that I can achieve more. And through the years, of course, as my workload got more and more, and as my responsibilities got more and more, um, I was thinking that I think I had to like change my strategies a bit. And I also had to like change my study methods. So before, I actually used to take all of my notes just in paper, which is a common thing to do. But afterwards, I decided that I think it's best that like I have all of my notes online. So, which is why I invested in in a touchscreen laptop or basically something that you could use for like online notes. Mm -hmm. And for that, 
I I had that idea because that so that in my latter like semesters I could always try to look back in my previous notes and that and that I don't have to have the physical copy for it which of course will take space and which will take time as well to to go through so aside from that I also made sure that like because it's common in engineering exams that um even if you understand the topic you might not have enough time to do it just because just just because the, the topic is hard and there's a lot of questions to answer so i actually like switch my priority from just understanding but also trying to work fast and by trying to work fast of course my study strategies change which meant that i really had to practice more and I had to do practice exams and I had to time myself. So I think those are the main ones that really helped me get to where I am right now. Very good. You mentioned something like first semester that you think that yeah, it I mean the, the grades are low. Like did you ever already um did you aim to be summa cum laude from first year first semester? No, actually no. So what is like you're saying is quite low to pass the degree? When you you no. when you mentioned the first semester? No, um, my first semester was 3.74. Okay. It, and uh, it's like um and that semester I actually wasn't here in Syracuse yet. I did uh I did a special summer abroad program. Okay. So I was in Madrid that time. Okay. And that time being in Madrid being in another country of course you're more like inclined to focus on you know like having fun and traveling rather than academics and which is what happened to me and after receiving my grades it wasn't that i was like not satisfied with it but it was more of that i think i saw it as an opportunity to to uh, to be better and do better because i think that you know in high school i wasn't really like like one of the top students so i wanted to change that and i wanted to achieve something that i haven't gotten before and i was like by just setting goals to get scores as as high as possible and it wasn't really about the scores that i focused on it was more of like the understanding of the topic because i wanted to get something from my for my degree which is just the knowledge that you get from from your various classes and i think it's more of like the grades were just a bonus mm-hmm. it's like i think the understanding and the, the knowledge is what i really wanted to get okay and somehow the result is that you got higher grades because you understood i mean yep. you had better understanding but you mentioned something like in high school you were not really a good um I mean the grades were not that good but when did you realize you could aim better like you could you could surpass your performance in high school just graduate with did you graduate with honors in Philippine science I actually did graduate with honors yeah like what level I, um I got high honors okay no it is, is, yeah it wasn't in the like I wasn't in the top 20 or top 10 of my batch Okay, and so, when did you um, decide? When did you s- decide that you will end? I mean, because we're talking about surpassing your limits. When and yep. how did you decide that you will graduate as summa cum laude? I think it was after that first semester, actually. That um, I felt that you know, college meant a new leaf, a new life, like a like a blank slate that I can start with, yeah. and you know, I don't have to. Uh, like my past will not define me anymore you know like if i can do better then 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 why shouldn't i so right. that's when it's like i was like i have to put in the work of course and i wanted to get everything as much as i can okay i like what you said that the past does not define me because i think that's a very crucial when you want to overcome your limitation and one limitation is what has happened in the past your track record but a way to get beyond it is really thinking that is history 
and I can make my future. Like, I can create my future. Well, the history, the past is like um, a standard for me. This is, uh, I could achieve that, but I could achieve even better. But then when you were yep. talking about, um, probably you were in Madrid and there's a lot of temptation to just do tourism, right? I've yep. encountered Filipinos when I was in, in studying in the SA Business School, my PhD in Barcelona, it's really tough. But sometimes I met some Filipinos who are really spending time and I could give them the excuse that, you know, you, it's not always, probably you will go back to your country. So you, be, you better take time to be there by yep. the beach, to go to Seville, to go to, I mean, it's really, um, it's really a huge temptation to yes. focus on doing tourism and parties and really enjoy life rather than focus on the study. So what could be like, what would be your advice for someone like you? I mean, what did you say to yourself in your younger self that time that, uh, could you repeat that when you, when you realized that you could do something better? Yeah. Like if you were to give think, an advice um, to someone like yourself in those first year, what would you give it? Okay. I think it's more of, what I would say is that, yes, having fun and enjoying is important in life, but at the same time, it's crucial to remember that that education is an, is a big investment for your future. And uh, like, even though the past wouldn't matter that much, the past is still there, and um, the habits and uh, the knowledge and the wisdom that you've built will be with you for the rest of your lives, which is important in building who you are. Okay, that's very good. And to, to, to be what you are right now, to become what you are right now, you must have major influence, influencers. Could you tell us your top three influencers? I mean, meaning the ones who have influenced your life and your philosophy when it comes to studying and achieving okay so i think my my top influencers would be my family so of course having my family beside me is is really important because again as i mentioned earlier i don't think i could have done this just by myself i think um without the support without the financial support from my parents and without the extra motivations from my from my sisters because I wanted to be, I wanted to be someone that I, uh, th that they could look up to, so I think that's a good motivation for me to work harder. Aside from that, a good influence for me would be my friends, because here in Syracuse, yes, there's a lot of temptation to just go party and stuff, but from that, I saw that I could try to fight that off by surrounding my friends with, with people who have goals and with people you know who want to do better and just work harder and i think my next few uh, answers would not be as common but i i try to practice this uh this philosophy called stoicism and which means that you're facing your hardships and you're facing your life with with basically calmness and you're not trying to react to everything that you experience and lastly i think what's important for me that change who i am is is basically my my hardships and my in my independence because starting from a younger age i've i've been independent well not really like like just like independent just myself but it's like my parents have taught me to be to be independent and in that i can you know even from like grade four or grade five i was doing international competitions without my parents so it was just me and a couple of um guardians 
and at the same time i was like starting from grade five i was already co- commuting from das marinas to alabang to go to summer training and i was doing that by myself and here going here to to college from madrid to going here to the us i had to figure out a lot of the stuff myself and of course it might be scary at first but i think it's really important because you build confidence in yourself that you can survive and that you can try to face your problems that's interesting when you mentioned uh, the family and at the same time being stoic about it like was there ever a time that you really miss them and you can say no study first right they will still be there <laughs> like did you ever fear that with the covid pandemic you really have to be there with them here locally was there ever a time yeah. that you pr- preferred being with your family rather than of course i don't know you had some study from home right could you tell yep. us some instances when you really missed uh, being close to your family and somehow you gotten over that being stoic about those feelings so i would say being stoic doesn't yeah. necessarily mean being cold okay and and i know that covid time was actually pretty hard for me and that um it was ad- advised for us to not stay in the university which is why luckily i was i was staying with with my aunt in south carolina that time okay and of course i will I still wanted to, you know, like be close with my with my parents and my sisters. And at the same time that that time there were a lot of students who were taking gap years so they could be home. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking about that and from and from there I was thinking that if I took my classes in the Philippines, I think I would have a much harder time just because of the time difference. Ooh, and because you're attending classes. Because of, yeah. Yep. Because I still wanted to pursue my education and I wanted to finish on time still not only because of, you know, just because of the culture of like finishing on time but at the same time there were also some financial aspects to it. Because right. because I was enrolled in the university and I wanted to to finish my degree on time. So from those thoughts I was still lucky that I was still surrounded by family and I think I just remedied that by by making sure that I communicate with them often. You know, it's lucky that we're living here in this century where we're like if you miss somebody you could just easily text them and easily call them. Yes. And you know like uh, and now sometimes Um, calling and texting isn't the only things that you could do online. Sometimes you can even play games with them, ah, play games with my sisters, and have fun, which of course is a good bonding activity for for everyone. Yep. Yeah, like um, how many sisters do you have? I have three younger sisters. Yeah. Oh, okay, I and think one of them yeah. is here. Is that Yelda, the one who says? Kuya yes. Kuya? Yeah. Okay. How old That's is she? The, she is um she is 13 wow i think turning 14 sir okay and the others what are the ages um one is 19 and another one is 21 okay okay another one showed uh shanley okay yes yes yeah. yeah, so are you the only boy in the family yes like, i'm the only boy you're 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 the eldest Yep. Okay. We 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 have the same in my family there's also my big brother and three of us sisters. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And then I think when you mentioned that you have we can play games in my family is Wordle. <laughs> like oh. all of us has to try Wordle and show it in Viber. Like in your family what are the games that you play with your sisters? Online games. Well, for my sisters sometimes I played uh, chess with them with uh, with Joshley with just the youngest I've also played 
Tetris, and just you know, like sharing videos as well. It's always fun. So that's really tough because of the difference. It's like uh, twelve hour difference. It is a twelve. Yeah, yeah. 12 so hour around difference. what time do you play those? Like somebody has to lose sleep. One time zone has well, to lose sleep here. Okay. Well, for me, it's like I'm not really losing sleep. I'm more of like spending time. Oh, okay. So it's good. Yeah. Very good. I like the ta- the I like the way that you qualify. Like when you say being stoic is not being cold or really i like that so it's really trying to um to examine your perspective and not giving yourself excuse but at the same time uh it's not even justifying really just trying to know what you're doing i like that and i think that could be very helpful for our young audience and then for my next question um did you did you ever like being alone there? Did you ever get into some mischievous idea that wow, I'm free? And how did you overcome that? I mean, you're free to um, do whatever you like. Your parents are not there. And how did you overcome that uh, somehow un- unbridled freedom feeling only of unbridled freedom being there alone? Okay. Um, so for that, I think it's more of that um, when you're free that. That doesn't necessarily mean that you can do all of the, all of the mischief that you can do. Mm-hmm. Freedom just means that you can do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. And I think with that, um, I used that freedom to do more stuff that I wanted to do, which was, which was more active stuff, more sports, more, more working out, and just hanging out with friends. And of course, like at the back of my head, there's always this thought that I think um, your conscious will always be there to guide you and reason with you mm-hmm. to show you that there's always a limit to things. And of course, that too much of one thing will eventually be a bad thing. Okay. Yeah. But you're very and, lucky. Uh, huh? it, seem, it, seem, it seems that in terms of moral formation, you really got it really well from your family. But somehow you can think that some young people might not have that how can they overcome that if they don't get that moral formation from the family i think um if they don't w- uh, just make sure that um uh make make sure to remember that your actions will have consequences because like even you know with the concept of like alcohol yes alcohol is legal at 21 and yes you can drink and you could party and stuff but at the same time um after the next day after you drink you will feel bad Mm -hmm. and of course you will lack for uh you will lose focus as well and and sometimes like there will always be some things where like it will have a domino effect and it can affect more stuff than you think it will. Yeah. Just the hangover alone, you know, the following day when you're supposed to be studying, somehow yep. some, some schedules will be pushed back you know, because yep. of that. You know? That's right. Actions have consequences. And you mentioned also friends. Like you, 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 it's, it's, um, I think it's very important in terms of surpassing your limitations. It's really choosing the ones you have to be with, right? The ones that can pull yep. you up rather than pull you down, yep. right? So yep. how did you choose your friends? Like, for example, did you also have some change in friendship because somehow this person is not helping me anymore? Because that could also be helpful for other young people, no? Mm. Well, I think for me, I'm like, to be honest, like in life, sometimes you don't also get to choose who your friends are. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I think my mindset is you get to choose what your actions are. Mm-hmm. And most of my friends are engineers. And at the same time, not all engineers will have the same mindset as I have with working. But that doesn't mean that I can let them, you know, that, uh, that I should just let them be who they are. I can also try to push them harder, mm-hmm. you know, so yeah. they can work together. Yeah. So at the same time, while I'm helping them, 
and as they improve they're also helping me so it's always like uh, complimentary a like, give and take yep yes, yep it's yes. always a complimentary yes. and i don't think that um you should be passive with with the stuff around you you could be active as well and just be the change that you need okay that's important that you have to be the change that you need or the change that also others need so do you feel that responsibility that you can set a good example to young people and what are you going like do you have some plans on be able to be more visible because other people need good examples um well i would say that um, i'm really thankful for you doc for giving me this opportunity to be in your live stream mm -hmm. i think just even with the smallest um task or like being uh, and or like being in a live stream such as this i think it's a really good opportunity for other people to see as well and so that they could learn something and you know like hopefully i inspire them to be better and uh, and achieve their goals I'm sure you can really be an inspiration because, you know, um, there's so many temptations, especially for the young people also. Um, and uh, sometimes the lack of, again, moral formation in the family can really affect their upbringing. And I hope that they can, yeah, they can, they can see you as an example that really it's possible to surpass one's limitation. And sometimes we can say we're lucky because your parents can support your scholarship, but there are also others, like I know someone who has graduated with uh, Gillian Robredo. She used to be a domestic yeah. helper. Did you hear that? And now she's a photographer. She graduated from NYU in the same batch as um, yep, yep. Gillian. Yep, same yeah, batch so, as me. Yeah, yeah, so I really wanted, okay, that's another person I should interview in another set of talks, right? So we really had okay, to... Yep to give give uh, present good examples to young people but do you when when you work do you always think that that responsibility for other people how do you balance like thinking of yourself and thinking of the others like living your own life at the same time being res responsible that others can be looking up to you okay um yes i have to admit that there is a pressure to uh, you know just like an internal pressure and sometimes that pressure can be harmful if you think about others too much and not about yes. yourself yes. but I think for me it's also necessary to think that um, you could only do so much and 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 others improvement is it's almost like 50 50 it, 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 it's like 50 percent of that can come from me motivating them to do harder but at the same time it's also up to their responsibility to actually put in the work yep mm -hmm. here in Syracuse I actually also work as as a tutor facilitator and of course that I can see that my students are trying to work hard but of course there's also some students who like after like all of my help will not really use it mm -hmm. but at the same time it's important that you should not put all of the weight on your shoulders because because you're living your own life and you're not trying to live and bring up everyone's life right yes right. you could only do so much to help as well and it's still important that that you help and do your best but make sure that um Every time you bring yourself down because you've, because because you didn't think that you uh, helped someone enough, every time you bring yourself down like that, will will negatively affect yourself and will also negatively affect how you help others in the future. Right, but with that, I think that's also a way to, I to, to include them in your prayers, as you said, your. Yep earlier your tip is really to pray and i think it's good also to to pray for those people that you're helping the ones that are your yep. tutees no is that a volunteer yep. work in syracuse that you are able to be a tutor um there were some that was volunteered but um the one that i'm mainly doing is a paid position very good so i think really in whatever way it's really helpful because uh, studies can be really challenging now i mean in my time there was no facebook and <laughs> sometimes you can say 
uh, to be a summa cum laude then is much easier than now with all of these temptations but having a tutor also to motivate to inspire to guide you can really be of a big help so i also congratulate you for that for taking that paid work that volunteer work also and then um i think i don't have uh, okay uh, somebody asked me can you ask justin about um what could be his vulnerabilities because having achieved so much i do you feel you have any weakness at all <laughs> so i found that interesting okay fine i'll ask him because sometimes yeah with so much achievement parang you're really uh, her, with herculean strength right could you answer yes, that yes that's true um to be honest having of course with the um, achieving the stuff that i have right now it's also easy to to think that um you're afraid of going of like um that you think that this is the best part of your life and that um and that um everything else can go downhill so there's always a pressure of that um you you won't be as good as, you won't be as good anymore and at the same time i also actually i actually struggle with um with like self doubt and uh, you know like imposter syndrome sometimes and but then of course like i always try to work around these things and i always try to address them properly and aside from that uh everyone including myself has emotions and even emotions even if like in the end i do like i do overcome them and and i get around with them during that period of time will always be something that's hard to manage right right i can imagine and then i think i have to give my last question because i can see that we're almost uh, ending the one hour have you experienced there in new york uh, a sort of discrimination for being a filipino for being an asian yeah to to be honest yeah, um uh, i have experienced one uh, there was this one time where i was in a grocery with friends and this was during the this was during covid season and we had masks on and and we were trying to distance from other people mm-hmm. but there was this elderly lady um that was an american and um, she just she actually went like behind us and then she was just like you could see that she was like mockingly trying to like cough just like um so you could see that like she was trying to like imply that the virus was from Asians mm-hmm. yeah because there was a lot of asian hate yeah like yeah. during covid season from right. uh, and i think yeah. it's still an is an issue right now asian hate so really it is still an issue it's it's we have to always pray right <laughs> you yep. never know what can happen with that hatred no so i'll pray for you yep. also and for many other Thank filipinos you. i myself have experienced that in barcelona um well, in many places so we just have to pray for these people and then so i have those questions lastly what would could be your top three um if there are like if there are values that you really value what would be those top three you mentioned actually earlier uh, prayer but um if like you just have this time to tell probably just also your sisters or your um young people what do what do you want them to take after i mean lessons from you top three lessons you could repeat okay. of course what you mentioned earlier your top your tips as summa cum laude but basically in life no top values that you have for life i think for that aside from prayer i think the top three that i try to that i try to put and use in my life would be first is honesty i think it's really important mm-hmm. and the second one is patience because of course the work that you put in won't always like reflect immediately and you just have to be patient 
So it's um sorry, what was the f- um so honesty, it's patience. honesty, patience, and the last mm-hmm. one is I think building relationships with other people. Because again, it's important that um you have um someone to rely on during your hard times. And of course, like, like even as humans, we're not to uh, live. Uh, we're not meant to live this life just by by ourselves. Getting that extra help from other people is really important, so you can uh, get to where you want to be. That's good. And right now, you are in the mode of applying for work, or you have um, a job already. Um, I actually just uh, confirmed going to grad school in wow. the University of Minnesota. Wow, that's another state, right? Yeah. Going yep, to transfer. It's, it's another state. Okay, so that's good. Congratulations. What is that postgrad degree? Is it more specialization? Yeah, um, well, generally it's in the field of um, aerodynamics and engineering mechanics, but I am working with a professor that I've worked with here in Syracuse. Mm-hmm. And she focuses on fluid dynamics and uh, fluids. Wow, good luck. Is that a PhD eventually? A PhD degree? This is a master's right now, but uh, wow, okay. my advisor has been pushing me through a PhD. So there's that. So yeah, if that might is be a like PhD, a yeah. one step, like you start with yep. the master's and that could be very useful for your thesis or your yep. coursework for the PhD, like really like uh, uh, hitting two birds with one stone. I think that's uh, like a good uh, a good methodology yep. yeah okay good luck and uh, you, um, aside from the postgrad so you have that in my postgraduate and afterwards you could be working there in the US yes okay yep. good luck and thank you very much Justin for this time and I'm sure that you will be able to motivate many young people to really surpass themselves, I don't think on, only for young people, even um, mature ones and adults, to always aim to surpass oneself. And there are many techniques, there are many apps right now, and you have been helpful in this live stream. So I hope you have a great day today. Is it Sunday there? Yes, it's Sunday here. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you have a great Sunday, Justin. So I now go yeah. to my next screen as I bid goodbye to Justin for his time. And thank you very much for um, spending your evening, if you're here in the Philippines, spending this evening. And I think we have learned a lot personally. I've learned so much from this live stream and this will be like uh, part of this blog. I normally um, repurpose whatever I get into the live stream into a blog and there you will see the summary of what we have learned from Justin and there's so much and I, uh, I think in terms of surpassing one's limitation you really have to aim always and have good influence from the family from friends and of course to pray because in the end there are some things that we cannot control and only God could help us there so of course i hope that you have learned also you have other tips that you have gotten and you can put them in the comments below what is it that you have gotten as tip from justin that really could help you to overcome your limitations or overcome your limiting beliefs so thank you very much and i hope to see you in my future live stream and for you for you to get to know the topic is very good if you could subscribe and click that notification bell so that you will know uh, the next live stream you will be advised you will be notified about the next topic for my next live stream so have a good day have a good afternoon have a good evening bye bye